So I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but I have been mining Ethereum. I started to do it about a week ago in the name of science in order to try to aggregate as much information as I possibly could in order to come up with somewhat of a primer on cryptocurrency mining. Now given the current mining craze and the fact that I get asked all the time on Twitter if I am mining or plan on mining or plan on doing a video on mining, it seems that interest is at an all time high and seems likely that a video on the subject is in order. So I'm going to try to boil it down for you in this video. In order to properly convey information about cryptocurrency, I think it's important for you guys to have an understanding about my background in the field. I have, at most, very little. As someone who has been involved with computers for more time in my life than not, I certainly have some general knowledge on the subject, but it wasn't until recently when I decided to educate myself further. In the space of a few weeks, I've done an enormous amount of reading on the subject, and as such, I'm going to be using information gathered from several different sources during this video. You'll be able to find links in the video description to all of the articles and forum posts that were useful to me in discussion of this topic, and I encourage you to do your own reading if you'd like more detailed information. In this way, I've sort of created a pseudo-bibliography for you guys to take a look at. Now, since it is so complex, I think the best way to go about handling this topic is to break it down into four basic questions that we can answer and then dive deeper into the answers to each question. Today, we'll be taking a look at what is cryptocurrency? Why does it have value? Should I mine it? And if so, how do I mine it? So let's start with the basics. What is cryptocurrency and what is meant by mining? Cryptocurrency was invented in 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto, who initially set out to develop a decentralized system of electronic cash that can be exchanged peer to peer. The way he did this and why Bitcoin succeeded where others had failed previously was by making all the people on the network validate each transaction. This is the central idea behind cryptocurrency in general, that each miner is actually contributing to the security of the network by verifying other transactions or completing similar security-based tasks. In order to accomplish this, miners need to dedicate some amount of computing power to the task of solving complex mathematical equations. Once they do, the transaction is verified and the miner is presented with a reward for their work in the form of a coin or a portion of a coin. Now you may have heard the term blockchain before and that the larger the blockchain, the more difficult it becomes to mine a certain coin. Well, the blockchain is nothing but a ledger of confirmed past transactions. As the original and most popular cryptocurrency, Bitcoin has an enormous blockchain, over 100 gigabytes as of the shooting of this video. Before you can start mining, you need to have access to the entire blockchain in order to allow you to add onto it, as subsequent confirmed transactions are added as new blocks at the end of the chain. Because some coins, notably Bitcoin, have a finite supply and the number of available coins is predetermined, as miners get closer and closer to mining all of the coins, it becomes more and more difficult to add blocks to the end of the chain. Once all of the coins are mined, no more block rewards will be given, and miners will only be paid in predetermined fees per transaction. Depending on how things go in the future, if Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies remain relevant or become even more popular, transaction fees likely will remain high enough to keep mining profitable for at least some operations, meaning that transactions will still be able to be verified even when no new coins are available. So to sum up, coins are rewards given for helping the network confirm peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So why does cryptocurrency have value then? Isn't it just arbitrary who has these coins and what they're worth? The cryptocurrency market operates under the same basic economic principles as any other market namely supply and demand. If people desire something, it will have value. Think of a time before there was some unit of currency and all trade had to be done directly, meaning that if you had thing A and wanted thing B, you'd have to specifically find not only someone who had thing B, but someone who had thing B and wanted thing A. Currency provides a way for people to place relative values on their objects. With currency involved, you could now sell your thing A for $10 and then simply find someone with thing B who wants $10. 
This is a lot easier. For the purposes of the rest of this section, I'm going to reference Bitcoin because it's the easiest way to discuss a complex topic. Bitcoin has value because it's a limited commodity that has no centralized controlling body. This means that it's free from regulation of governments and banks, and it is very difficult to tax or trace transactions. It's also universal, meaning that it can be used anywhere on earth where the government allows it. Think of Bitcoin sort of like gold. There's no real reason why gold has value. After all, it's just a hunk of metal in the ground. It's almost arbitrary why many nations at some point in their history used gold as the standard on which all other currency was measured. But in order to facilitate transactions, something has to hold value and be the central reference point for all trade. This is happening with Bitcoin now. As people value these fundamental properties of Bitcoin more and more, the value of a coin goes up. Right now, one Bitcoin is worth about 2,700 US dollars, close to an all-time high. As Bitcoins become almost impossible for everyday people to mine, the supply has leveled off compared to early years where the block rewards were much higher and the supply was doubling every year or two. As Bitcoin usage as a commodity increases, this will inherently drive prices. There was even speculation earlier this year that at some point in the future, Bitcoin could hit a million dollars as economic juggernauts like Japan are now allowing retailers to accept it as a legal currency. However, this isn't all there is to it. Because Bitcoin is still young and adoption while growing is still not what would be considered widespread, volatility in the market is a real problem. There's constant concern over how much your stash of Bitcoins will be worth not just in a few years, but just in a few days. So given this volatility, should you mine cryptocurrency? Well, the current craze is based on the price of another currency, Ethereum or Ether. Ether saw a spike in price in May when huge companies like Microsoft and Intel realized they could use the Ethereum blockchain to help execute contracts once certain conditions are met. The Enterprise Ethereum Alliance was formed and now has almost 90 member companies. As a reaction, the price of Ether has quadrupled over the span of just a few weeks. The skyrocketing price has caused a run on AMD graphics cards, with everybody and their grandma looking to get in on the action. AMD cards are much less power hungry than comparable NVIDIA parts, and due to their better integer compute performance can perform the intense mathematical tasks faster. An RX 480 can churn out a better hash rate than a GTX 1070, a card that retails almost at twice as much. Specifically, Polaris cards are now sold out everywhere, meaning that if you don't have the hardware and want to get into the mining game, you'll need to shell out some serious coin on eBay, where cards with an MSRP of $200 are going for as much as $500 a piece. To build a decent mining rig, you'll need a couple of these at least. The upfront investment at this time, combined with the potential volatility in the market, means that if you're not in the game already, it might be best to stay out, at least until hardware prices come down some. Also a consideration here is your electricity costs. Running several GPUs at 100% load 24 seven will have a significant impact on your electric bill. And if you live in an area with a higher than average kilowatt hour cost, even the significant returns you'll see from mining right now won't really offset your expenses. It also depends on what you actually want to mine, as some currencies are more difficult than others. Consider this chart I worked up for my current mining rig, where even though I have a decent amount of hashing power and a relatively low cost for electricity, mining bitcoins would actually result in a net loss for me. On the other hand, if I wanted to mine ether right now, this is what my expected return is based on current pricing. There is also the very real concern that your components will take a longevity hit. If you have hardware specifically for mining, this isn't really an issue. But if you're just an average person with a gaming rig that wants to do some mining on the side while it's profitable, be aware that having your GPU sit at 70 to 80 degrees for days at a time does take a toll, and you might be shortening the lifespan of some of these parts. When the mining craze dies down and you just wanna go back to playing your favorite game, it would suck to have your GPU give up the ghost. So you've done your research. You've run the numbers, you've got the hardware, you want to start mining. How do you do it? There are two ways to mine, solo or in a pool. If you're mining solo, you are taking on the full workload of trying to complete a block in the chain yourself, and you'll need a ton of hashing power in order to do so with any regularity. 
The reward for solo mining is that every block you uncover means that you'll be reaping the full reward. For instance, the current reward for mining a block in the Bitcoin chain is 12.5 Bitcoins. That's about $34,000, which sounds awesome until you realize that you might actually never be able to do this. When mining in a pool, all miners in the pool share the reward once a block is uncovered. So your rewards will come much more regularly, but will be far smaller. Also, you'll pay pool fees and have to deal with pool outages, which do lead to lost mining time. Mining is also fairly complex, and you'll need some amount of competency using a command line interface in order to get up and running, which can be scary for some people. For instance, for Ethereum mining, you'll need an actual Ethereum client like Geth, which will talk to the Ethereum platform and allow you to download the blockchain. You will then need mining software like Ethminer, which allows your GPU to run the hash algorithm necessary to complete blocks in the chain. You'll also need a wallet, somewhere to keep the ether that you mine. Coordinating all these programs running based on command line entries is pretty daunting, and even more so when you realize that unless you're adept at writing batch files to execute all your commands for you, Every time you want to start mining, you'll need to open a command prompt and type a whole bunch of gibberish. The last article linked down below will have more information on how to get up and running mining ether. But there is a bright side to all of this. It's actually never been easier to get into the mining game than right now. There are mining programs that will run all the necessary background tasks for you and in real time evaluate the profitability of mining each specific cryptocurrency based on your hardware configuration. They can change what your system is mining based on where you'll make the most money. These programs are actually brokers of hashing power. You sign up as a seller and other pools use your hashing power to help uncover blocks. This is what I'm actually doing right now with Nice Hash Miner. No matter what currency I'm currently mining, I get paid in Bitcoin, which is the easiest cryptocurrency to exchange for real dollars if you don't have any interest in holding it or spending it directly. NiceHash is also working on implementing payment via Ether and hopes to roll it out soon. So now that you guys have a little more information on the subject, are you interested in cryptocurrency mining? Are you doing it already? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget that at 10,000 subscribers, we'll be doing a full Ryzen 5 system giveaway on the channel. So get subscribed and follow me on Twitter if you're not already. As always, guys, thanks for watching.